this is the harvest moon. Is that what they call it? Yeah. This time of year? Makes sense, I suppose. What do they call it? Harvest moon. So today we're going to be going after the small tunas. We're going to be using spinning gear and lures. They've been a little finicky from what I'm hearing, but there's been a good amount of them around. Only thing is we got a bit of a southeast wind today, so I don't know, it could be a little too rough, but we're gonna give it a try regardless. The combination of a southeast wind and dropping tide made for dangerous sea conditions at the North Cut in Chatham. Hold on guys, as we go through here. Hold on. Yep. Doesn't look too friendly. It was too risky to pass through the North Cut, so Colin decided to try the South Cut, located near Chatham Light. The waves at the South Cut were still large, but we managed to make it through. And after a bumpy ride, we arrived at the Tuna Grounds just after sunrise. It's not even blowing that hard, it's just coming from the wrong direction. It was a nice southwest wind and be perfect. Our next step was to find the fish. So Cullen took out his binoculars and began searching for signs of life. There were birds on the horizon back in closer to shore. See something? Yeah, I think that's them over there. I don't know why they're in so tight though. We headed towards the birds while keeping our eyes peeled for splashes created by feeding tunas. I don't know if it's a whale, but I saw something right under those birds. Right there. See him? Oh yeah, nice break. They throw that into them. All right. You see him bust over there, Nathan? What's that? Did you see that fish come up? I think so. Right there. There's one, just one right there. Right under that bird. Catch right under that bird. Right off our bow, right off our bow. They just went into those birds. Oh yeah, right off the bow. Just start blind casting. You're gonna hook, hook him here. We're off the bow. We were surrounded by bluefin tuna. Oh, right here. Right next to the boat right there? Yep. They're busting all around us, Rye. Just cast that right off, just start blind casting. They're just all spread out through here everywhere. The fish were very difficult to catch. We cast a variety of lures without any success. So we decided to try trolling with the spreader bar. Spreader bars imitate a school of bait fish swimming across the surface, and trolling with spreader bars is an effective method for catching tuna around the world. All we could do now was wait and see what would happen next. You wanna go to Maine? I don't know, today, tomorrow. I'm trying to catch little tunas here. Got one chasing it. Oh, one just came up on it. Oh boy! Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm on a one foot. Yeah. Did you get that? Oh yeah. Cape Cod is home to the region's most beautiful beaches, ponds, and natural habitats. As anglers, we often find ourselves fishing in these special spots. This season, I'm asking you to join me in picking up trash and plastic whenever you see it while out fishing. Picking up trash while fishing might not solve all environmental issues, but it's a simple way for us anglers to help make a difference. Welcome back to My Fishing Cape Con TV. Right now, we're trolling for tuna and our spreader bar is about to get slammed by a nice fish. 
Got one yeah, chasing you, it. You, you might probably feel right. decent when you first do it, right? Oh boy! I gotta go. <laughs> I'm on a one foot. Yeah. Did you get that? Oh yeah. I can still see him. Based off the drone footage, we knew this tuna would be the perfect size to eat. At least we're eating, right? Yep. Maybe. God willing. God willing is right. Try to come over here. Just don't want to get in the motors. So interesting how sometimes the troll bite is just on. Yeah, I think if you had like a big spread out, you could catch 30 a day, probably. Really? Yeah. So interesting. Any idea as to why that might be so? Um, I just think they're at the, they're feeding at the right level so they see the bars and they're all spread out, so they're hard to get on spin, you know? Gotcha. Even small tuna put up a tremendous fight, and after 15 minutes, Nathan had the fish right beneath the boat. Oh, he's got some fight. Wow, he doesn't want to quit. There we go. <laughs> no, what do you mean there we go? Nice. Awesome. Oh. It's not often that we're able to actually lift a tuna on this boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yep. Regulations for bluefin tuna change often, but at the time of this filming, the rules allowed us to harvest up to three tuna per day, from 27 to less than 47 inches. Cullen set the spreader bar behind the boat, and in no time at all, we had caught the interest of a second bluefin tuna. Really, really? Oh! One just came up on it. Looked like one came up on it. We're on! I gotta go. <laughs> Did he swirl on it a couple times? Yeah, he did. I thought I was seeing things, and then he came back and cre creamed it. Pretty mm. awesome hit. It's pretty cool. Nathan, Nathan's sick of reeling these things in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to reel it? No. <laughs> Put Nathan to work. That could be a sweet, sweet bite shot. He definitely took a couple swings at it before he got hooked. We're marking them pretty good, too. The tuna was the same exact size as the first fish and would provide us with plenty of meat. With two fish on board, we decided to call it a trip. Well, it's about 11 o'clock. We're gonna head in. We got our fish. No need to continue catching them. We got plenty of meat. We're going to probably have some sashimi, but Lauren and I are also going to try smoking the tuna, which is something we've been doing with all sorts of different fish species this year. So, awesome day on the water. It's finally calming down a little bit. Awesome. As soon as I got home, I went to work filleting the fish. Tuna sushi is separated into grades based on the fat content. Different cuts can be recognized according to the marbling throughout the steak. I used a spoon to remove leftover meat from the ribs. The head of the tuna also contains several high quality cuts. Rosie wants some tuna? The next day, I decided to smoke some of the meat. After smoking, Lauren and I prepared the tuna for long-term storage using a pressure canner. Done properly, pressure canning will preserve tuna for up to a year. This tuna is now over six months old. 
and it made one of the best tuna sandwiches I've ever eaten.